I li I'd love to tell a little story about a male asshole that's from France, Dominic Strauss-Kahn. And this happened in America. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fine assholes. The flabby, lecherous fuck stumbles out of the toilet wearing a bath towel. He trips over his fluffy white terry cloth slippers, which bear the monogram of the upscale hotel in Midtown Manhattan that was charged to the credit card bearing his wife's name. At a tab of 3,000 biggins a night, damn right he's gonna take those slippers home for the terrier to chew on. He giggles like a little girl at his own buffoonery, but no time for humor. The lilting sound of a woman's voice in the next room reminds him of his manhood, his mission. He grunts, then grins. He barrels down the hallway as he drops the towel, pumped up and power drunk on the smell of his own smegma. Now I wish it would have been me. Knocking on his door, on his hotel door that fateful morning in early May, and now don't laugh. One of the few stints of gainful employment to which I played slave to a weekly wage was as a hotel maid in upstate New York. I needed cash and fast. I was underage, but I didn't look it, and I had to cover my ass. I paid 20 bucks for a fake ID, which changed my address, the date of my birth, and gave me a new name, Betty Lou Harris, which sounded like a nice piece of Bible thumping southern white trash. It had the ring of a lonely runaway in a Tom Waits song that glorifies diners and truck stops and the poor people that populate them. It looked good on my work application. I adjusted my personality accordingly. I started snapping my gum, calling people darling, wearing blue eyeshadow. It also incited a new alter ego to develop, Big Lou a ballsy brutarian who got off by beating the shit out of drunken frat boys just like him as they stupidly fumbled for their wallets or their keys on the way home from a booze-soaked beer fest. Whatever. I got the job. I was given a uniform, a name tag, and a cart loaded with carcinogenic disinfectants. I popped uppers, I perfected speed cleaning, I pilfered through businessmen's luggage and pocketed whatever cash or jewelry I could find. I often left little mementos behind at the bottom of their suitcase for the wives back at home. A pair of girls' soiled panties, a tube of lipstick, half a joint, a love letter written in florid scrawl. You know, it takes one to know one, a thief. A cheat, a seasoned con artist. Sure, I've juggled, cajoled, finagled, pleaded, threatened, seduced, begged, borrowed, and I still fucking steal if I have to to keep my neck above water. Short shift grips, bait and switch, petty, penny shit, hit and run. Nobody gets sunk. I'm not selling nickel for diamonds or strip mining. I'm not breaking anybody's bank or bankrupting whole countries. I'm just trying to keep my neck above water as a preemptive measure against once again having to dabble in the fine art of lowbrow prostitution. And it takes one to know one a fucking whore. But if I sell or have sold sex for money, it's an honest exchange for cash for a specific service well rendered whereby I as an independent solicitor, set the ground rules, a time limit, and the conditions under which the arrangements will proceed. It is not to play pussy and line the pockets of a cartel of elite pimps who use the art of manipulation to seduce working stiffs into a lifelong debt and an eternity of agony as the Johns are tricked into becoming the victim of an endless gang rape perpetrated by warlords and their army of corporate kleptos who get off on playing well-paid whore in the service to the almighty cockocracy. Enough said. I wish. Knocking on his fucking door that fateful morning in early May. Or better yet, me as Big Lou. Swiping the electronic MasterCard into the slot on the door and calling out housekeeping before entering. Walking in with a vacuum cleaner in one hand and a spray bottle of disinfectant in the other. How priceless it would have been to employ my own fucking shock doctrine. 
to gloat as the fear registered on the face of the rutting chimpanzee as he came rampaging out of the toilet. The look of a lifetime of arrogance and privilege instantly replaced with confusion and pain as a pain quick blast of sodium hydroxide scalded to red the gray jellied sack that swung loosely between his fucking legs. How I would have been the one laughing like a little girl as Big Lou closed in for the kill and kicked his hands away from his crotch, his legs out from under him, and blew the asshole a kiss as he crashed to the floor panicking. His screams drowned out by the vacuum cleaner as it swerped up his shriveled little pinky giving him the fucking blowjob of his goddamn life, sucking as if to pluck out at the root the canker of his soul. The poison malevolence thinly disguised under the milky skin of artful deceit and it takes one to know one, a deceitful cunt. Oh, and I have been duplicitous at times, I won't deny it. I mean, I have shirked at revealing important details. I have omitted facts and ulterior motives. I have denied culpability. I have insisted upon my own innocence, even when I am obviously not. But such tactics were employed only to prevent unnecessary damage to the inquisitive party from the knowledge of my own crimes, and not, I can assure you, from a Machiavellian imperative so deeply ingrained in the psyche that it has perverted even the neuroanatomy of the prefrontal cortex, resulting in the antisocial behavior of a slightly brain-damaged psychopath whose every word is so fucking tainted with the corruption of treachery and deceit that to allow him, yes, D.S. fucking K, even one more breath, is to willingly and willingly endorse the perpetration of an endless fraud upon endless and countless victims the world over. And I wish it would have been me knocking on the door that fateful morning in early May with the hopes of preserving what's left of the planet. And as token and in warning to the legion of corporate soldiers just like him, I would have kicked the motherfucker in the head until the rug ran red and ran into the streets screaming like a little fucking girl. So leave these fucking assholes. Okay.